Hey there. So today I am cool. Everything seems to be working. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Cool. So today we're going to talk a bit about data types and recoding. Uh, you can kind of think about this as another dive into data wrangling. Wrangling. And yes, I am wearing so many stripes. We'll find out how unhappy Adobe Premiere is with this clothing setup because uh, it can get very unhappy. But anyway, enough about me. Let's uh, let's dive in. All right, here we go. Where's my mouse? Cool, my mouse, it lives, awesome. So data types and recoding. So why should you care about data types? Besides that I dedicated a module to it. Well. Well, um, they're kind of important. Let me illustrate. Uh, so here's a survey that asked respondents for their name, their number of cats, as well as their handedness. The instructions said to enter the number. Ah, okay, that, enter the number, or enter the number of cats as a numerical value. Uh, so let's hope they did that because we know how great folks are at Instagram. Oh, well, when we try and summarize it, the number of cats, just using a basic kind of summarize function where we create the mean number of cats from the number of cats, uh, we get this warning that says argument is not numeric or logical, returning not. Yeah, not helpful, not helpful or, well, in reality, we want something, we wanted a number. Okay, so let's go look at the mean and see what is up. So uh, as we look through, we can just press question mark mean and it'll summon the documentation similar to how it looks below. Uh, the arithmetic mean is a generic function for the trimmed arithmetic mean and uh, usage it needs an X and the default is na.rm is false and trim is zero. Okay, Com complex vectors are allowed for trim zero. Currently their methods for numeric slash logical vectors as well as these other data types. A logical indicator whether na values, so missing values should be stripped before the computation. And okay, so this documentation is telling us that our data needs to be a different type because what we got is not, not that. So, um, actually I lied. Uh, so here, the first thing to do, and this is a default I find really annoying, is that we want to have it throw out missing data before because otherwise it gets very unhappy. But we get the same error. Uh, argument is not numeric. Okay, so now we go and look at what the actual data type is with clips. Uh, and here we can see that we've got a character vector for names, got also a character vector for numbers, as well as character for um, left and right. Okay, well, that's a pretty clear indication. This needs to be something else. Um, but ooh, this worked for once. Okay, so by some miracle, this is working. And why did it give us a character? It should have been smart. <laughs> Here's why. Here we got number of cats. Doug Bass gave us a, a string. He wrote it in English, in words, and not as we would have liked it as a number. Oh, all right. Um, there's probably some other errors, but just clicking on this here. Uh, okay, Ginger Clark. That's also great, great. People cannot follow directions. So we're gonna have to fix that. So Ginger Clark really means 
this is cute, yeah, but it's not helpful for our data analysis. So we're going to have to turn Jenner Clark's answer into a who. Um, there are probably some others, but like just looking through, yeah, we can scroll down because I still haven't figured it out. Okay, but yeah, so those two, two folks, so Ginger Clark were mutating her data to a uh, number of cats and using the case one function. So case one name equals Ginger Clark, we're going to assign a number of cats to be two. We're rounding and then just purging all of Ginger's adorable commentary. And we're also fixing Doug Vass, who cannot follow directions, to three. And while we're at it, we're going to convert everything. So true, case one true is like what you do to everything after. So they process them in order. But then case one is true. We're going to convert everything to as numeric. Cool. Warning. Problem with mutation. Nas, and yes, I say Nas in my head because it gives me joy. NA is introduced by coercion. Input number of cats is case one. Okay, so it fixes that up um, and more warnings and gives us a table. So it gives us what we want with lots of warnings, uh, scolding us, but we got our results. So mean number of cats is 8.3. Cool. Yeah, that is a journey in data. Now, just as a general rule, you need to be respectful of data type, is what I'm saying. So if we want to get rid of those little errors, um, we can essentially put as numeric out here. This is what it wants. I mean, technically we could kind of smush it in. And here we got no complaining whatsoever. We got our beautiful database and our beautiful mean level of cats. And yeah, we got the same number, but those errors aren't playing. So that is where we're going. So yeah, so now that we know what we're doing, we're gonna also assign all of this hard work two cat levels. So we essentially what's happening here is we are doing all the things we already did, but we are cleaning up our data and assigning our data cat lovers and essentially replacing it with our updates. So now when we work with cat lovers uh, within our environment, uh, we will have that numeric data that we want. So the moral of your story, blah, blah. The moral of this story is if your data does not behave how you expected it to, type co coercion um, upon reading is usually, is, oh my God, the script is here, which is where the, the camera is. So what I'm gonna do is just shift the screen. Cool. Yay. All right. So, um, so if your data doesn't behave how you think you had expected it, type coercion upon reading in the data might be the reason. So go and clean it up. Look around, poke at your data, save it, and then live happily ever after. Look at your data. Look at your data is the moral here. So uh, that's going to wrap up. I'm going to see, actually, I'm going to wrap here. I'll see you later. Bye.